This is an example of a country blues style 12 bar for my latest video lesson. In this lesson we're going to explore and learn walking bass techniques that we can use under any shuffle blues. I'll show you how to create walking bass lines that will work equally well under country, Chicago or Texas type shuffle blues. Then I'll leave a backing track running at the end of this video for you to practice your own walking lines. These techniques are also transferable to other styles so they're well worth learning. Country blues is one of the oldest forms of the blues and it would often only feature solo voice and picked guitar. Delta blues originated from the Mississippi Delta area and it's a regional variant of this country blues style. The main instruments used in Delta blues were harmonica and guitar, often slide guitar. And it wasn't until later on in this style and when we get into Chicago blues that bass was featured at all and originally it was a double bass. Musicians from this Delta region of America moved north in the Great Migration of the 1940s and a lot of them ended up in Chicago. This is how the Chicago blues sound was formed. Instruments gradually became electric and then the style became heavier with the influence of rock as well. There was then a revival of this country blues style by artists such as Sonny Boy Williamson II, Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters. In the 1960s and 70s, these blues artists travelled to the UK and Europe and played in some of the blues rock festivals and they heavily influenced players such as the Yardbirds and the Stones. The track you heard me playing at the beginning of this video is in that country blues style. It would be more in keeping with this style to have an upright bass, so I'll play you a version now with exactly the same bass line on upright. One of the real characters and pivotal musicians in this early Chicago scene was an upright bass player called Willie Dixon. He was responsible for booking musicians, playing bass and producing tracks for Chess Records who were the major label in Chicago at the time. I'll now show you some of the techniques that I used when I created this bass line and we can play the same bass line on upright and electric. If you want a copy of this bass line, I've written it out in standard notation and tab and you can get that by clicking the link below this video in the description. The form of this track is a 12 bar blues and it's in E. We have a bar of E, then a bar of A and then two bars of E. Now in a simpler 12 bar blues, we just have four bars of E, but this A chord makes the sequence more interesting. We then have two bars of A, two bars of E, a bar of B, a bar of A and two bars of E and right at the end of this sequence we've got a turnaround where we go to a B. I've written this chord sequence out for you too on the PDF. Before this 12 bar form starts we've got a vamp on E so we've got four bars on E. Now a vamp bar is just a repeat bar that you have and it's quite usual to have it in blues. If you play a gig or a jam night then you might just vamp around at the beginning until the vocalist comes in or you start the 12 bar form with a solo. The first time round the chorus I've played a two feel and this is quite common for this style of blues. The bass line follows the guitar line and we have a push into beat three so we have this rhythm. In this two feel we can just use the root if we want or we can use root and fifth. 
For those of you that don't know, the root is the main note of the chord, so it shares the same name as the name of the chord. So in this case, it's an E. The fifth note is the fifth note of the scale, and you can get the fifth by playing the root first. So we'll play E on the seventh fret of the A string, and then we go along two frets and up a string. So that's the fifth. And it's also down here as well. So same fret, but down to a string lower. So root, fifth, or root, fifth. If you aren't used to the 12 bar blues sequence, then try practicing it with this two feel, just using root and fifth. Now I've written this out as an exercise and I've put that on the PDF too. I'll now play that for you. We'll now skip to bar 17. This is the second time round the sequence, and this is when the proper four in a bar walking starts. This continuous pattern of four quarter notes gives us our walking bass line feel. The first technique that we can see straight away in bar 17 is the use of this root third fifth pattern. In this case, these three notes are E, G sharp and B, and they're the root third and fifth of an E chord. Now these notes are the chord tones of E and they form the arpeggio of E. These are safe notes that will always work in a walking line. In fact, you could play through the whole sequence just using root, third and fifth. It would make a fairly standard walking bass line and it wouldn't be that interesting. But we can use this root, third, fifth idea as an exercise to play through the whole sequence of the blues. So I've written that down too on the PDF and I'll play that for you now. The second technique I'm going to talk about is always landing on the root when we change chord. You can sometimes use other notes of the chords like the root, the third and the fifth when the chord goes over a few bars. But unlike in jazz where we don't necessarily play the root at the beginning of the bar, in blues it's really important to establish the chord on the first beat of the bar when we have a chord change. Very occasionally I do break this rule in the bass line, but make sure you're comfortable establishing the chord sequence before you do that yourself. The third technique we're going to look at is useful for moving between different chords. If you look at bar 22, we're moving from an A to an E. What I've done here is I've started on A and stepped up to E in the next bar. So I've played A, C sharp, D, D sharp to E. So when we're moving, we can play three frets below the note that we're going to. So A, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. I've also used this technique in bar 24, where I've moved from E to B. This is a great sounding technique that you can use in all of your walking bass lines. Now you can also use this technique in reverse, so you can step down three frets to the next chord. You can see this in bar 18 where we step down from A to E. So the three frets above E. The last technique I'm going to talk about is how to shape your walking bass line into phrases that move gradually up and down over a few bars. This shape will really drive your bass line along and create some interest for the listener. You can also build and release tension with this technique. Have a look now at bars 27 to 33 and I'll play that for you now. You can clearly see and hear the motion here. We start moving upwards from bar 27 and then we start moving down from bar 29 all the way to bar 31 and then we start going up again to the beginning of bar 33. The general rule here is that if you go up or down then make sure you come the other way afterwards. 
This may come naturally for some of you, but if not, I suggest that you create your own bass lines and try and record yourself. Then have a listen back and see if you've got any shape in your lines. Maybe try and go in one direction for two bars and then change for the next two bars and keep going like that. To summarise the techniques in this video, first of all, make sure that you land on the root when you have a key change. Set up some structure in the bar with the use of roots, thirds and fifths and then link the different calls with the two techniques that I showed you, three frets below and three frets above. And last of all, overall, try and get some shape into your bass lines by using up and down motions. I hope these techniques have helped you. Have a further look at my bass line and see if you can spot any more techniques that I've used. Studying different bass players is an excellent way to learn techniques that you can then incorporate into your own bass lines. After all, all these techniques and styles have just passed from one player to the next. I'll leave this country guitar track playing at the end of the video in a minute, and you can practice my line and practice creating your own lines under the track. These techniques will work under any shuffle blues. Try it, for example, under a Texas blues track and see how that sounds. If you've got any questions about this lesson or just about blues walking lines in general, then please leave a comment below this video or you can head over to the contact page of my website, gbshed.com, and you might find some other bass resources over there of interest to you. Remember to subscribe to Greg's Bass Shed here on YouTube by pressing the red subscribe button, and also please like and share this video. This is Greg from Greg's Bass Shed. I'll see you in the next video.